What's going on lads and lasses, welcome back to 100% Merc, so we've got a lot to get with TFN2 in today's video, We're talking about of course the recent news circulated around and announced by Newcastle United on Lewis Maley signing a new deal with the club, uh, also talking about some transfer news in this video as well and also talking about our game tomorrow in that 8.15 kickoff down at Villa Park as we take on Aston Villa. Uh, this is going to be an interesting video make sure you hit like share subscribe to the channel and let's get into it so starting off uh, in this video we are going to be talking about of course the lewis Miley news first now 17 year old lewis Miley is absolutely on fire at newcastle united he is doing some amazing stuff and he is the future of football right now He's already been in an Adidas advert for their brand new boots with a number of other Newcastle players, Joe Linton, Alex, uh, Anthony Gordon as well. You know, this kid is definitely going places. He's got a bright, bright future ahead of him. And he has now just signed a new long-term deal, committing his future to Newcastle United, his boyhood club. He's one of what own. And I'm just so happy to see, you know, that Lewis Miley has signed that deal. He's tied himself down, you know, at uh, the club that he loves, his hometown club. And he is absolutely thrilled to bits, you know, that he has signed that deal with Newcastle United. Of course, breaking onto the scene in the end of the 22-23 season uh, when we played Chelsea down at Stamford Bridge, coming in for his Premier League debut. And he didn't put a foot wrong. I've got to say, he didn't put a foot wrong in the game. Uh, since then, of course, this season he's made 18 competitive first-team appearances, including three outings in the Champions League. Fantastic games. He absolutely tore apart against uh, PSG as well. And he has been capped for under-19 20, uh, the under 19 level sorry, for England as well. Uh, and in November of 2023, just gone, uh, last year, of course, he became the youngest ever Newcastle United player to register and assist in the Premier League uh, when he set up, of course, Alexander Isak uh, for his goal in a 4-1 victory over Chelsea. Uh, he then also became the youngest player to record an assist for an English side in the Champions League uh, history in, of course, December of 2023, uh, laying on a pass for Joel Linton to score against AC Milan. And then just three days later, he become Newcastle United's youngest ever goal scorer in the Premier League, bagging the opener at St. James's, of course, against Fulham in a 3-0 win. I mean, this lad, like I say, is definitely going places. He's already been linked, uh, of course, to a likeness alongside the likes of Jude Bellingham, Phil Forden, and so many other massive names uh, that are out there right now and for me personally I'd say Lewis Miley is definitely a one that we'll have to keep an eye on uh, he is definitely going places and it's proven it you know with the performances in the Champions League this lad is absolutely on fire absolutely on fire um, upon committing his future to Newcastle United his boyhood club like I say he's one of one uh, he said he's really proud uh, of the moment for him and his family to sign another professional contract uh, with his boyhood club and he couldn't be prouder. Uh, hopefully he can continue to do well over the next few years and can keep improving uh, performances and getting better as a player. It's a real joy playing in front of the fans, of course, uh, especially to hear them chanting his name. Uh, their support means so much to him and his family uh, and he's looking forward to the future. Anyhow, of course, uh, commented on Lewis Miley as well, saying Miley is an exceptionally young talent and has all the abilities to be a huge part of Newcastle United's journey both now and for many years to come. Anyhow, then added on to that, uh, he has already contributed to the team with excellent performances and very challenging circumstances this season and we are very excited about what is to come as he continues to develop his game and grow with us. Uh, he also then went on to say, I'd like to acknowledge the role of the club's academy in Miley's development. He is a shining example of the club's talent pathway 
and he can hopefully inspire our younger players to follow in his footsteps so some fantastic words by eddie obviously as always uh the up professional that eddie is you know he always has uh some great way with words uh and he does it again you know massive uh respect to eddie you know for what he has said about Miley and just absolutely amazing you know i can't wait to see what else Miley does for newcastle moving forward uh, but moving away from the Miley uh, news, of course, there is news saying that Newcastle United are looking at a transfer in this window. Uh, another player that is being linked with a move to Newcastle United and it is Aston Villa's Jacob Ramsey. Aston Villa are at the moment, however, having some financial problems. So there could be a possibility that this deal could get done for cheaper than what Aston Villa are trying to get it done for. Aston Villa are asking for 50 million. I think that deal could come down in price, especially with Aston Villa dealing with some FFP problems like most teams are. Uh, we have seen quite a few teams this season are dealing with FFP problems. Uh, but I'm sure that price could come down if Newcastle negotiate the deal. Uh, of course, if we are indeed actually after Jacob Ramsey, this could be yet again another piece of clickbait news from the journalists uh, just throwing Newcastle's name in there to up the value of the player uh, but moving away from that of course that is all uh, there is on the transfer news uh, as of today and of course uh, the news about Miley as well but now we'll talk about of course the game against Aston Villa now Aston Villa are flying high at the moment in the Premier League. They're doing some fantastic stuff. Of course, we've already played Aston Villa this season. We were the first team this season uh, to play Aston Villa. And we played them at St. James's Park. We absolutely walked them off the park as well in that game. Uh, will this be a similar situation uh, yet again? You know, will we we'll see what we did at the beginning of the season happen again down at Villa Park? Who knows? Um, but, you know, since... We got a 2-1 win against them in September of 2013. We've made six top flight visits without scoring at Villa Park. Uh, playing out successive 0-0 draws before uh, losing each of the next four. Uh, the last magpie to find the back of the net at Villa Park was Johan Gufran in the 2013 visit. Since uh, then we've played out 557 success uh, scoreless Premier League minutes. Uh, down at Villa Park, not including, of course, in that sequence is the 1-1 draw in the 16-17 championship season uh, when our goal was actually an own goal registered by an Aston Villa player in that game. Um, of course, you know, looking at the team news, we'll look at the Aston Villa team news and then we'll look at, of course, our team news going into the game. On the Aston Villa side of things, Bertrand Chore is on, off, on AFCON duty. Uh, for Bakuna Fasa, uh, who faced Mali in their last 16 tie on Tuesday. Ahead of our visit, Unai Emery's side drew 0-0 uh, with Chelsea at Stamford Bridge and the FA Cup fourth round on Friday night. Uh, gone on home ground this season, uh, Aston Villa are unbeaten in all 10 Premier League games, uh, winning 9 and drawing 1. 29 home goals scored in the highest total in the Premier League. And eight conceded is the joint lowest with Liverpool. So they are on some fine form on home soil this season. Can we be the team to upset that record? I think we can. I think we'll have enough in the tank to be able to do it. But we're going to have a look at, of course, the team news for us going into this game. So speaking today in his press conference, Eddie Howe stated that he hoped Miguel Almirón would of course rejoin the squad after illness uh, there was of course images uh, circulating around that you know uh, Miggy was going into the RVI now maybe that could be due to illness but there was also rumours going around that it could be a move away from Newcastle United to Saudi Arabia with Al-Shabaab uh, talking about a move for Al Mirren out to the Middle East uh, but Eddie Howe here saying, of course, illness. He was unavailable for the game against Fulham in the FA Cup as well due to illness. So maybe it could be illness, but I'm going to keep my options open on this one. It could possibly be a move away as well. 
Um, we do know that Eddie is a very good tactician when it comes to press conferences and he knows how to keep his cards close to his chest so we'll have to wait and see on this one uh, but of course that was less optimistic about an injury victim in of course the cells who again is another player that is being linked with moves away um, not so much uh, reports in England but reports in Turkey uh, saying that Besiktas are going to buy uh, Jamal Lascelles out there uh, there hasn't been so many uh news on it here in the uk however uh, so we'll see what happens of course with that one as well uh, without giving a specific time frames uh eddie admitted as well that harvey barnes and callum wilson were closest to returning um followed by joe willick then elliot anderson and others as well along the likes of matt target nicky pope joe linton of course further back uh, on them returning and of course Bruno is just one yellow away from reaching 10 in the Premier League and triggering an automatic two match game ban uh, Anthony Gordon is two bookings short of suffering the same fate so hopefully uh, of course they can keep their tackling to a bare minimum not uh, putting too much in on it and of course you know being careful with their tackles as well in this game as the referee for this game is of course none other than john brooks again it is another scouse contingent on the referee uh for the game second appointment involving newcastle so far this season after a 2-1 defeat uh by liverpool at st james park when he dismissed of course um virgil van dijk uh, Brooks was also in charge of last season's Premier League visit to Villa, uh, of course, by Newcastle. And on four, it is none of other than Andy Madley as well. Uh, so that is going to be an interesting one to see how that officiating team go in the game and how they work in the game as well, because we have had some very dodgy calls this season. Uh, hopefully, we'll, we'll have uh, a bit more of a even uh, performance from the officiating side of things but looking at it you know this is going to be an interesting uh, game I mean you know last season it was a 3-0 loss down at Villa Park the season before that was a 2-0 loss the season before that 2-0 loss and the season before that was also a 2-0 loss uh, the own goal of course back in the 16-17 campaign was of course by Elphick uh, who scored the own goal uh, of course from the Villa side to get us a goal on the score sheet uh, but you know other than that 13-14 season when we uh, won 2-1 with Ben Arthur and Gufran you know we haven't had the best of luck uh, at Villa Park so hopefully you know that can change and like I say we've already beaten them this season at St James's Park I know it's different you know we're not on home soil this time Aston Villa will have the advantage because they're on home soil and they've been doing fantastic, as I've just said, you know, this season. But I think we will have enough in the tank. I think we can come away from Villa Park with three points in the bag. And of course, I do believe if I was to go with a score prediction for this one, I'd go with Newcastle to come away 2 1 winners down at Villa Park. I'd be happy with that. Uh, to be honest, I'd be happy with a 1 0 win. Newcastle as long as we'll come away with the three points in this game that's all that matters it gives we a chance to keep pushing higher up the table uh, and try and get ourselves into them European spots you know if we can't finish uh, seventh or you know Europa League possibly Champions League if we can but if we can't you know then Europa League Conference League that'll be all right with me you know at the end of the day it's still Europe still gets money in the coffers it still allows work to, of course, uh, increase our FFP legroom moving forward. And, of course, uh, in the summer as well, there is a new FFP coming in, a new form of FFP coming in. So we'll have to wait and see, you know, on that one when we'll get a little bit closer to how that one works uh, out. But let us know your thoughts down in the comments below on everything said in today's video. What will your thoughts uh, and also make sure to hit like share and subscribe to the channel like i say fantastic to see lewis miley signing a new deal with newcastle united i'll see you all in the next one and how well the lads